Okay, guys, I'm here today with Gordon Ryan, a huge honor for me. Guys, Gordon just shot an entire structure all about his half finger no gi, which is probably like the best half finger no gi out there. And I'm super excited to learn from him. I love half finger, I, I like half finger more with gi, so super excited to learn from Gordon what he has to show about the no gi half finger. Yeah, so our, our goal with this half guard instructional is to show the integration of half guard into other guards, okay? Meaning that if you want to have, have a good and successful half guard, you can't just be a half guard player. You have to also be able to play open guard, you need to be able to play from a supine guard, ashigurami entrances, you need to be able to play uh, a leg lock game, have ashigurami, X guard, leg locks, you have to be able to come up and attack from turtle position. You need to be able to do a wide array of things in order to have a successful half guard, okay? Meaning, if I'm playing from a butterfly half guard, for example, a half guard variation, and Bernardo's on top of me, if I'm in a situation like so, and I'm just playing half guard, it's going to be difficult for me because most of my entrances from a butterfly half guard are going to be into situ are going to be into X guard and Ashigurami variations. So if I can get to my partner's legs in an X guard, but I don't have any real way of submitting or sweeping my partner from an X guard, it's going to be hard. I also can do things like use an overhook where I start initially from a butterfly half guard, but then I end up in a situation where I'm in a seated guard. Or now I'm playing with sumigeshi and butterfly guard sweeps. If I don't know how to sweep someone effectively from a butterfly guard, it's going to be tough for me to be effective from a half guard. So what you're going to find is situations where if you only are good at half guard, you're going to find yourself getting to 95% of what you want, where you're almost to a sweep or almost to a submission, and then that last 5% is going to inhibit you from not actually getting to your partner's back or getting to a sweep or getting to a leg entrance or what have you. Okay, so you need to be able to go beyond half guard and go into situations where if you're a good half guard player, you're also a good Ashigurami player. If you're a good half guard player, you're a good seated guard player. If you're a good half guard player, you're good at attacking your partner's back. And this way, you have a way to start from a half guard, but transcend half guard and go beyond the half guard itself into the other guards and be successful outside of half guard, where your initial setups are coming from a half guard. And additionally, if I'm a seated guard player, I can't just be someone who is seated here and then Bernardo crushes me to a half guard and then next thing you know, I don't have any half guard, uh, any bottom half guard game and I'm getting my guard passed. So if you are good at a half guard, you have to be good at playing a seated guard and a supine guard and attacking your partner's back, attacking your partner's legs. And conversely, if you're a good seated and supine guard player, you can't just be a guy who gets crushed into a half guard and then all of a sudden you get your guard passed, okay? So the focus of this, is going to be the interface with from half guard, starting in a half guard and moving into the other systems, okay? Um, the format of this instructional is going to be, we're gonna start from a butterfly half guard, move into a knee shield half guard, and then eventually move into what everyone's asking for uh, is deep half guard, okay? Um, I didn't go too much into being flattened out because that's more guard retention, and I talk about this more in the instructional, but uh, it, it encompasses the full wide of the all the variations from a half guard coming up into your partner wizard versus underhook diving under your partner going into deep half elevating into the legs all that's in there so it's going to be it's going to be something special no that's awesome gordon so gordon can you just show an example for us like uh for what you call like the half bird fly the knee shoots and the deep half bird, and just how you think when you are in those situations yeah so most of my half butterfly game Okay, this is a guard that is actually my preferred guard to play, okay? I'm actually a reactive player, but because everyone stalls so much against me, I'm forced to be a proactive player and play a seated guard, okay? But if, I, if you see me in no time limit matches, my preferred guard to play is always butterfly half guard, okay? But because people want to just back away and stall, I have to sit up and start harassing their feet with Ashiwazas, Teiwazas, and start creating more Kazushi. But when I play with the butterfly half guard, the good news, number one, is that your feet are protected. So when your partner goes to attack your legs with leg locks, it's hard because I, I dominate the inside real estate, okay? Whenever I play with a butterfly half guard, my whole goal is to start to elevate my partner into ways where I can either go into sumigeshis, where I can punch, for example, into an underhook, and now I can forward shift into a seated guard and go into all of my seated guard moves, or move into situations where I can start moving underneath my partner and getting into situations where I can go into all of my ashigurami X guard variations. So while I start in a butterfly half guard, in a half guard variation, I move to other types of guards to start the sweep from a butterfly half guard and finish the sweep from these other Ashigurami X guard variations or C guard variations or what have you. 
Okay, so that's the basic idea of a butterfly half guard. When I move to a knee shield half guard, now my game is much, uh, is much different from here. I look to either one, use this to shoot into deep half guard, which we'll talk about in a second, or two, I use this to come up into situations where we're at underhooks, and now we can start coming up and looking at moving into lower leg shifts and moving towards our partner and fighting from this situation. Where now from here, we can start looking to get to our partner's far leg and sitting our partner down from here. And worst case scenario, our partner goes to the whizzer and pushes down to the floor. We can start rolling under and diving into situations where we can start sweeping our partner. So when we play a butterfly half guard game, our primary focus is to elevate ourselves underneath our partner. When we play a knee shield half guard, our primary focus is to play a combination of coming up to our knees to chase our partner's far leg or our partner's back, depending on what their reaction is. And when our partner pushes back into us, we play a dilemma between coming up into our partner and diving underneath our partner, okay? When we play in a deep half guard, now we have a wide variety of things that we can, we can start to attack from here. We can look to pommel butterfly hooks into place, and we can look to come out and start to chase our partner's back. Where now we have a situation where we're attacking turtle. So you can't just be good at half guard. The worst thing you want is to go in, you start a half guard sweep, you get to turtle, the guy stands up, he gets away, you score nothing, okay? This is why you have to be good at attacking your partner's back when you play a half guard. We can be in a deep half guard, and we can start to move into positions where I enter into my partner's leg, where I start initially going in, and I move into an X guard, into an Ashigurami, into a reverse X game, okay? So I can go into my partner's legs from a deep half guard, provided I have a butterfly hook. I can start to play in positions where I lock in, I play with scorpions on my partner's leg. Where now I can start to come up, I can start to threaten sweeps, I can start to heist, heist up on my partner, I can start to do all these attacks where I either come up into attacking positions with sweeps, or I go into leg attacks, back attacks, and all of my previous moves. And worst case scenario, you move into a position where you're in a deep path guard, and your partner forces a knee to the floor, for example, and tries to knee slice past your guard, now he just puts himself in a position where he's in a lower leg shift. Or now I can play the same knee shield game where I start to either one, roll my partner through, or if he bases back on that knee and pulls away from me, I can start to come up and play a similar game where I can move back into my original series, okay? So we start off with series from each position, and then by the end of the instructional, we have a full system from start to finish. So okay, oh, so gorgeous. So for example, so half your, is part of your guard. So for example, you are either playing butterfly or half guard, right? Yeah. And then inside the half guard, you have the half butterfly, you have the knee shields, and you have the deep half guard. Yeah, exactly. And you always you always combine them according to your opponent's reaction, that kind of stuff. Of course, yeah. The this thing I talk about most uh, in the beginning of the instructional is that half guard is primarily a reactive guard. If somebody wants to stall from half guard, it's pretty easy to do that, okay? So if Bernardo's on top of me, and all Bernardo's interest is in putting his, his leg or his arms through my legs, lacing my legs, and not doing anything from here, it's pretty easy for Bernardo to stall me out. So if I'm just a half guard player and I have nothing else in my arsenal, and he knows this, he can easily stall me out for minutes at a time from a half guard. So now the responsibility is on me to be able to start sitting up, clearing this leg, and moving to a seated guard where now I can follow yeah. up with more attacks where I can snap him down, I can go into snaps and drags, I can start pulling and pushing yeah. and create opportunities. Where now he has to engage and then he can push me back into half guard. And he's like, okay, well, now if I'm in a seated guard, he feels like there's way more attacks coming. So maybe now he pushes me back into half guard and now he's not as, now he's more reluctant to stall on me because he knows if he does stall, I'll just forward shift oh, yeah. into a seated guard and then go into, into more attacks from there. I got it. So half guard is almost like, one whole system inside your arsenal. And then if the guy is stalling, then you completely switch the system and you go more like towards the butterfly. Exactly, yeah. Man, that's awesome. This is what I spoke about, and I think we did the podcast, uh, you know, a year or two ago. And this makes sense. Like this is how John taught us and everything makes sense like this. At first you just have a series of moves, okay? So you have, your, let's say your passing guard, for example, you have a top head and arm, here's the moves you can do from there. Then once you have a series of moves, you start to realize that once you have enough series from a certain different from a certain position, you have a system. So you have a system from bottom half guard, which gets you from beginning, middle, to the end. 
And you're like, okay, now I have enough moves to create a system from one given area. Then let's say you go from attacking turtle and you're in a, you're a, uh, you can effectively take your partners back from any given response when, they, uh, when they're in a turtle position. Now you wanna to move to attacking your partners back. So then you learn a few, a few moves here, a few moves there, then you have a couple series here and there, and then eventually you have one full system from attacking the back. So now you have attacking the turtle and attacking the back, a system from each. Yeah. So your ultimate goal in jiu-jitsu is to have a system from every given situation so that at any point, if one of the systems fail, the weakness of one system is covered by the strengths of another system. So if I'm in a half guard, for example, and I'm in bottom half guard, and I feel like the guy's just stalling me out, and I feel like, okay, this half guard system isn't working from here, and I can't get any offense going, the weakness back. of the half guard system, uh, the weakness is that overall it's a reactive guard and the guy can stall from there. But the strength of a seated guard is that it's very hard for your opponent to stall from a seated guard, which means that I can move from a half guard to a seated guard and the weakness of the half guard system is covered by the strength of the seated guard system. Okay, so I can move to a seated guard and continue my attacks. And then the, the weakness of a seated guard, one of the weaknesses of a seated guard system is that if the guy outflanks you, you have to fall back down to your back, which means that if he stands up and he starts to run around my guard, I have to fall back down. Then he can force me to a half guard. But the weakness of the seated guard is covered now by the strength of the half guard. That's awesome. So, you have a series of moves from each position, and then you have a system from every given spot. And then you have a system for every position in jiu-jitsu, and then the goal is to figure out how to combine those systems where the weakness of one is always covered by the strength of another. Man, that's awesome, Werner. No, that's awesome. And when we watch you competing, we can literally see that happening, because even when you're passing the guard as well, we can see that there is a whole sequence that you're using to pass the guard. And many times it's up in half <laughs> on top. Yeah. yeah. No, that's awesome. <laughs> Yeah, so guys, Gordon just shot this entire instruction all about his half guard system for no gi, and it's gonna come out very soon at bjjfanatics.com. So maybe by the time you're watching, it's already there. So make sure to check that out. And thanks so much, Gordon. Thanks, guys. Awesome. Please help me out to grow my YouTube channel. Just click subscribe. And to watch more videos, just click under see more videos. I hope you enjoyed. BJJFanatics.com. Use the promo code YouTubeFaria to get 10% off any instructional video. Improve your jujitsu faster.